Hi everyone, so today we're going to do a range test with the Polestar 2. Just going to be short range, I'm going to drive about 20 minutes, it's kind of my normal commute towards work. Um, 20 minutes up the A23 and then a section of the N23 in the UK and uh, then back home just to see what kind of consumption we get in terms of how much electricity usage and uh, get a sort of predicted range from short journeys on the motorway. Alright, let's go. Okay, so ready to head off on the test. As I said, it's gonna be a fairly short drive, just 20 minutes each way, but it um, is mostly at 70 miles an hour on the A23 and the M23 up towards Gatwick Airport. So I'm gonna precondition the car before we leave, just to give an indication of um, what it would be like if you had warmed the car up already. Outside air temperature at the moment saying 15 degrees. Battery was starting at uh, 83%, but once we've preconditioned, might be down to say 82. And uh, projected range of 220 miles. So let's get the car warmed up and uh, we'll head off. So in case you're wondering, preheating is a function that's available on the Polestar 2, but only from the menu inside the car at the moment. This is a feature that they claim will be added to the app at some point in the future. But at the time of making this video, you can only do it from the menu within the car. So the easy way to do is to just do what I'm doing on the screen right now. Jump in the car, go to the uh, air settings menu and uh, select parking and then select uh, preheating, pre-cooling. Get that started and then uh, wait a few minutes until we're warmed up and uh, off we go. Okay, so on this drive, um, it starts off at 30 miles an hour. You can see here on the map, we're in a small village in uh, West Sussex. So 30 miles an hour is the initial bit, and then it's a short section that you can go at 50 miles an hour before you join the A23 to head up to Gatwick. So the weather conditions today are quite pleasant. There's no rain, or roads are nice and dry. Temperature, as I said, is uh, 15, dropped down to 14 degrees. So it's pretty pleasant. Uh, it's kind of weather that you'd expect to get, I suppose, fairly decent range. I mean, warmer would be slightly better, but it's not too bad today. But no rain, that seems to be one of the big issues a lot of people are finding with range on uh, this car and other electric cars. It gets a lot worse when it's raining and there's a lot of uh, resistance, I guess, from water on the roads. So driving style for this video, what I'm gonna try and do is stick to the speed limit. So we're going through the 30 zone using the cruise control set on 30 and then uh, I'll speed up to 50 and then same thing on the dual carriageway and motorway I'll limit that at 70. It's so kind of just try and keep it consistent I guess maybe a lot of people would, would drive slightly differently but I'm not really trying to get the best possible range I'm just driving fairly normally um, as I would do on most normal days. So uh, my personal settings at the moment I've been driving with the standard regenerative braking option selected. I know a lot of people might not choose that for their everyday driving. I really like it. Like I barely ever had to touch the brakes, which I think is great. I'm not sure though, that gives you the best fuel uh, electrical consumption. There are other tests that have appeared in some other videos where people have tried both. And, and I, I know that uh, on the BMW, the 330e, the eco mode actually encourages coasting as opposed to the regenerative braking. So there's definitely something to be said for the coasting option as potentially being slightly better in terms of maximizing your range. In terms of driving style, personally, I find the one pedal mode is really, really good. Once you get used to it and you modulate the pedal correctly, you can predict and let the car pretty much do all the stuff before you barely have to touch the brake pedal yourself. Okay, so I'm accelerating up to 70 miles an hour now. It's quite a significant uphill slope from where I live up to Gantwick Airport so it's quite a big elevation change so I always see the worst consumption heading in that direction and then you get a lot better when you come back so this is going to be the section that's going to make the car look pretty bad doing an A B A test is always the best way of getting an average number because if you just go in one direction you don't take into account the elevation or perhaps wind effect of that journey so I'm going to go there and back which will give a good average number and we'll know that when we get back home. 
There are a few things that I'm really enjoying about the car. I've had it for 10 days now. One of the things I particularly like is this uh, cruise control that follows the car in front. So it's not a revolutionary concept. There are a lot of other cars that have this, but it's the first car I've had that has that feature. So you're able to turn on your cruise control, set your speed to so say 70 miles an hour. And with the bu two buttons on the steering wheel, you can decide how close you'd like to maintain the distance from the vehicle in front. So if you get a little bit too close, it will just slow you down and follow that car. And then if, if the car in front of you disappears, it'll reaccelerate back up to the speed that you've selected. It's a really useful feature. Okay, so we're coming up to the exit that we need to take. Uh, I'm gonna get off the A23 here at Gatwick Airport and drive down to the Shell garage, which is pretty close to where I would normally park if I'm driving up here for work. I'm gonna stop there and have a little bit of a look at the consumption that we got on this particular journey that went from uh, a lower elevation to the higher elevation of Gatwick Airport. And then we'll get ready and we'll head back home. So first leg of the journey is done. That was the drive up to the Shell Garage at Gatwick Airport close to the North Terminal. So basically, yeah, you can see from the display now, we're, uh, we're registering on the trip computer at uh, 34, maybe just under, around 34 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So 22 minute drive, 49 miles per hour was the average, 17.3 miles it's telling me that we drove. So yeah, that should be the worst section of the journey. And now we're going to get ready to go back and we'll be heading downhill most of the way. So we'll see if that um, has any effect. And uh, I'm gonna leave it so we get the cumulative total once we get back home. So it's a very quick stop off here at the Shell and uh, see behind me, a hydrogen filling station. Not very many of those in the country. Uh, this is one of the only ones I think in this area. I don't know how many hydrogen cars are around. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use it, but it's kind of cool that it's here anyway. Right, let's go. just left and uh, the trip computer at the moment is saying so far we've done 35.6 kilowatt hours per 100 miles 24 minutes 45 miles per hour 17.8 so let's see if we get any better than that when we get back uh, to our destination something that's quite interesting the predictions on Google Maps I haven't tested this out extensively yet, but it's showing 64% remaining when we get back. That's 10% usage for 17 miles. Earlier on when I did a journey back home from Brighton, I think I saved about 2% on the Google Maps predictions. And I've seen one or two other people comment on some of the online forums that uh, thought that the Google Maps seemed to be a little bit pessimistic. So it'd be interesting to see if that's how it pans out, because it, it's better if it is, if Google Maps thinks you're gonna end up with a little bit worse than you expect, it's kind of nice to actually get there having, having beaten its predictions. This is 
is a good example of the one pedal driving working really well. I've slowed down from 70 miles an hour to a stop here as we exit the A23. I haven't touched the brake and I've been able to coast down just using resistance from my foot on the pedal to get us down to the right speed when you reach the roundabout. It works very, very well. So we're back and uh, yeah, let's have a look at what uh, kind of numbers we got. Let's just stop up front and uh, have a little look at the trip computer. Okay, so we're back. We reached the destination with 66% battery showing. And on the trip computer, that's registered 34.6 miles at an average of 33.9 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, 43 minutes of driving time and 50 miles per hour. So how do these numbers work out in terms of predicted range? Well, the type of journey we were trying to do today was a fairly short range, high speed motorway kind of journey. Even though I stuck to the speed limit of 70 miles an hour, it would get a lot worse if you drove faster. But at that uh, number, 33.9 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, that works out to about 2.95 miles per kilowatt hour of electricity. That should give you um, about, if you were able to use the entire battery, which obviously you can't, um, a theoretical range of 230 miles. So yeah, that's that's not as much as people would hope to get. But in reality, I think if you think about what most of the reviews have said of the car and what you would get in any kind of petrol or diesel car, you never get the kind of fuel consumption that they claim in the testing environment because that's very much controlled. And those numbers generally come out better. Um, so yeah, I think in this case, it's just interesting to see what a fairly short 17 mile there, 17 mile back journey at a temperature of, we averaged 12 to 15 degrees during the, uh, the test. It was a bit warmer going there and a bit cooler coming back. Comes out with a theoretical range if you were doing journeys like that of about 230 miles. So I hope you've enjoyed this short video today. I'll be doing some more tests of this type and uh, trying it out with different ranges and different speed com combinations so yeah hopefully you enjoyed it and if you could subscribe like share do all of those kinds of things that would be great and i'll see you next time thank you